What is going on guys, it's your boy MC Fixer and I'm back with a brand new video. We're back doing Ask Fix. It's a monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, fortnightly, who knows what it is. Uh, show where we, where we put out there to the audience that we want questions and we answer them. I'll be honest, I've been getting some interesting questions from people, so I thought I want to answer them. I want to I wanna produce more content on the channel, so why not go with this? So here we go. The first question is from Matt P Video. What does it say? It's from Matt Phillips, aka at Matt P Video, and says, what's the one piece of content you're most proud of? Man, that's a great question. The first piece of content that comes to mind that I am most proud of is a show that we did. Uh, <laughs> I only got two episodes but only one of them actually came out was called uh, Fix at the Mix. And Fix the Mix was a baking show that we did. Uh, the plan was to do five episodes of uh, five episodes of it. Yeah, it was just one of those shows that I really enjoyed doing. But it cost too much to make at the time due to the fact of our budget was super super low. Um, it took oh my goodness gracious me so much time to not only edit but to actually bake cakes and things like that. But from a production standpoint, um, we used a friend's kitchen. We had multiple cameras set up. That was one of the piece of content I was really happy with the way it, the way it came out in the end I was really proud of it it showed that we could do something more than just sat in front of a camera talking ha 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 sat in front of a camera talking now nah, I know or doing a let's play or doing a stream it showed that I had some sort of comedic chops kind of a little bit um again i don't think of myself as a funny person really so to be able to make a piece of content and have people come back at you and say that's really funny the other pieces of content that I en i've enjoyed doing that i'm proud of obviously both of my greg miller interviews being able to talk to the person you look up to most and then have that energy in the room together um, for me was very very special. You, I, I never felt below. I always felt equal. That was a great one And then obviously these last couple of months have been like really interesting for me because I've been on big outlets now I've worked with IGN. I've worked with GameSpot. The IGN one was really fun for me being on a podcast unlocked I, I proved to myself that I do know what I'm talking about. I can I can articulate in my own style but i can articulate what i'm trying to say about video games and then have an audience come back to you and go wow you were really good I've, I've prepared for this moment for such a long time but to be able to go out there and actually do it and and have the audience come back and go yo we like this guy that meant a lot to me that meant a lot to me so yeah those are probably like the the, the few that stick out in my head there were some important pieces of content for me and and very much helped me along this journey of what we're trying to accomplish. Thank you for the question. This next question comes from Reese Coldham and says, what's your aim or where do you see yourself in five years? Such as still going at it alone or maybe start to build a team so staffing to make more content and expand or stick at it yourself with collaborations. About And what projects do you have in mind to take on? Great question, so thank you very much for it. In five years time for me, I still see myself being independent you know like nowadays everyone who who's coming up is like they've done media or they did to film school or they went and become a journalist or all of these things like that isn't how i started i started off as a musician that then transitioned into doing youtube that then transitioned into doing gameplay that and then all of the three have just sort of intertwined um so for me in five years time what I would want and what I think will happen are two very, very different things. What I think will happen is we will remain independent. We will still be making content. Hopefully we are making enough money to keep going. And that's always the goal. Obviously, if people don't know, patreon.com um, is where we, we, we make money on this content. Remember, we've only today, like literally, I found out today um, that we are now part of the YouTube uh, partner program, so we get ads now. So don't skip them, all right? No skipping ads anymore on my channel. Um, only joking. Yeah, so for me, it's it's to keep pushing Patreon, it's to keep building a fan base, it's to keep growing my Xbox and me, which is my Xbox podcast. Keep on grinding, keep on growing, keep on doing what I've been doing. Um, I'd love to have a full-time editor on. That would be their sole job, just to take over the YouTube channel, because I've loved making YouTube content again. You've seen it, hopefully, which is like the NBA series, the PGA series, the reviews we've put up. We've got a lot more content to come. This, like to be able to have that, but just have one editor that is paid to do that, 
for me would be a huge huge deal um in the next five years i'm gonna want kids or a kid i should say um hopefully have in place sponsored content and sponsorships and branding and stuff like that because the industry is is super scary it's super super scary and i'm i'm very fortunate that i have a fantastic community such as you guys that watch this content want to support it on patreon want to just help it grow want to watch me on twitch so it's about how we're going to grow from there but yeah i've never wanted to do this solo i've always wanted to be part of a group solo for me is so lonely you have no one to bounce ideas off of you have no one to to collaborate with other than like if you're collaborating with others right like i've always wanted to be a part of something so for me i would love to be be a part of something in the next five years do i think it will happen i don't know we've got my xbox and me my xbox and me is no longer just me it is me it is crash it is don't give a bit it is zyger it is nanobiologist there is a team of people there i do think we need to come together a little bit more like the avengers uh to work together a bit more a few more ideas going back and forth between everyone again go subscribe to the uh, youtube.com slash my xbox and me channel if you haven't checked that out we talk about all things xbox over there and uh yeah where where I, where would i like to be in the next five years i think it's pretty obvious where i want to go it's pretty obvious the company i want to work for I've not, I've not been shy about it um but kind of funny is obviously the end goal it's the goal i know obviously i've interviewed tim on my xbox and me and he said like don't let don't <laughs> do not make kind of funny your goal and i understand that i totally understand where he's coming from but if you would have asked me five years ago would i have been on ign GameSpot? um outside xbox like so many places i don't think i would have said yes so i don't think i can't let it go out of my brain that's still where i would like to be it's still where i'd like to work is it the only goal no but is it one of the top goals yeah because why the heck not dream big you know this next question comes from sir ollie and says what's your main reason for becoming a streamer money no i'm joking <laughs> definitely not um my main reason for becoming a streamer was i was i was stuck in a rut when it comes to creating youtube content um people know this i've spoken about this on stream so many times but the first two years of streaming i hated it going from that zero counter to one person from two to three to three to four to four to five took me a long time time to do it wasn't an overnight success it wasn't a i woke up one day and just had people in my chat it, it took many years years to make that happen and unfortunately in today's climate and today's generation everyone just wants instant success it's like give me it now give me it now give me it now it just isn't how it worked or it wasn't where how it worked for me the reason i became a streamer was that i wanted to play video games but i wanted to create a community of people that also wanted to play video games together and it's something i'm still working on i wanted a safe place for people to come to be able to express themselves uh, be able to have great banter towards each other um, but also obviously in that very respect way but yeah for me it was just to have a place that i could call my own somewhere i could come and sit down and play games and share that that magic there's a there is a real magic for me when i stream and sometimes you guys are in discord with me playing games and sometimes you're not and then there's it's us playing um final fantasy 7 and it's like don't do that do this and don't do this do that and it's that that collaboration between us the, the chat and me and me going against that and then having a great moment there or me doing a team wipe and just absolutely annihilating everyone on call of duty warzone and having that chat just erupt when that happens it's for those moments but it, it was for me it was too to get comfortable in uh, doing something live obviously I, I don't do anything I, at the time I wasn't doing anything that was live so it's it's watching what you say it's learning to speak the right way and not everyone's cut out for that but for me that was like my main reasons for becoming a streamer and uh, I love doing it it's one of the best things I, I do and uh, make sure you go follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash mc fixer drop a follow doesn't cost a thing this next one comes from eldozo one and says what has the past five years been like for you in regards to creating content? I think I've heard you say a few times that you still don't really make a livable wage from this and would even consider giving it up and doing a quote unquote normal job. Whatever a normal job is these days. What's it been like? It's been it's been very up and down. It's it's been one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life to date. Um, but it, it's not meant to be easy. If you want to be a one percenter in this world, um, it's not meant to be easy. Um, it's been challenging to, to be your own boss, number one, to time manage yourself, to schedule things, um, to know how to follow the trends, to know when to play what you actually want to play compared to what you know is going to get you 
good numbers and engagement. It's been really, really challenging. It's it's like no other job I've ever done before. And I've done plenty of jobs, as you, as most people know. I've worked in McDonald's, I've worked at Clark's, I've worked at Argos, I've worked in video game shops, worked as a cleaner. Like, I've done it all, but this this job is, is like no other. It has the highest of all highs that I've ever had in my life, and it has some of the lowest of lows. I've had a mental breakdown by doing this job. I've had burnout, I've had just lots and lots of things have happened while trying to, to make it as a uh, content creator. But I still wake up every day excited to do it. I wake up every single day ready to ready to just take on the next day, take on what's gonna happen next, what we're gonna do now. It's today the day that we're gonna get we're gonna get partner. It's today the day we're gonna we're gonna get our average viewers up from 30 to 50. It's today the day we're gonna go from 4,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel to 5,000. It's today to the, any of those days. Some months I make barely enough some months i make very good money like it's it's one of the most it's one of those jobs that is so volatile in terms of making money and um, it's a job that you're always spending money on if you're not getting sent games you have to buy games you have to buy new controllers uh you have to buy things for the business constantly new mics new cameras new this new that so it's learning all of that side of the business really that's that's been challenging as well um i don't know if i would give it up altogether like i never think i never think i'll ever give up creating content i've been mc fixer since i was like 12 so i don't think i'm ever not gonna be mc fixer if i'm honest with you um i do worry though about the next five years because as i start approaching 30 which i'm 28 now um i also am thinking about marriage and having kids and could i do that while doing this due to money is what i'm talking about mainly here and it's like I don't know if it's going to be able to do that. Remember, I'm full time. I think I think some people don't realize that I'm full time. They just assume that I've got time to stream eight hours a day and then get off and do Twitter posts and then get off and then create YouTube content and get off and do this. Like I'm full time. I, I, I literally get up at half past six in the morning, start streaming at seven, go from seven till three, from three till five, do emails. Um, I take a day off from streaming on Wednesdays to create YouTube content all day, which is what I'm doing right now. I believe that that this video will touch one person that may consider going to patreon.com slash mcfixer or going to twitch.tv slash mcfixer and subscribing and and thinking this content is worth the money you know or or not use ad block on my content so they know that that's helping or they have youtube red and they know that that helps in a different way like i just believe in the community that we've built we have enough people in the community to make it it's just how are we gonna how does it work and uh, yeah, but I, I, I'll never give it up, Eldozo. I'll never give it up. I love it too much. This last one comes from uh, Paul D. Spawn and says, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? This is a great question. Obviously, you must have seen my tweet that I put out. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you deal with imposter syndrome. It's one of the hardest things I've had to deal with ever. I wake up and wonder every day why. Why do you watch this video? why do you support any of the content that i'm asking you to support it's something that eats me up it is it's, it's hard it's hard it's why did i make it why did i get on ign unfortunately it took four and i've said this time and time and time again the boom we have seen on this channel and on the my xbox and me channel and on the twitch channel happened because somebody was murdered someone was killed and murdered in cold blood which started obviously the black lives matter movement as someone who has always struggled with where they identify i'm a mixed race man so i'm half white half black right and then you see the you see people talking about like white privilege and then you see um obviously the the, the march is out there for black lives matter and then you see someone like myself benefit from it it's hard to know was I actually good enough to make it on IGN? Uh, was I good enough to make it on GameSpot? Or did they, they they needed their token mixed race guy that week? After speaking to them, these companies, I know it isn't the case. I know that yes, they're highlighting more black creators because they haven't done it in the past. But to get back to the, to, to the question about, I don't know. I don't know how you deal with it. 
I feel like I'm good enough, but am I actually good enough? I feel like I'm 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 funny enough, but am I actually funny enough? I feel like I'm I make good content, but is it actually good enough? I feel like I'm I've got a personality, you know, but is it actually a good personality? Why do people actually support me? Why do people come in my stream and gift a hundred subs? Why does El Gato reach out to me and, and send me a new microphone? I don't know. It's a struggle every single day, and I think it's so, I think again I don't know because I'm not around loads of content creators. Um, but anyone with a with a heart, I feel like, or with a brain, feels it as well. Like, why me? We're just we're just people, and I think that's something the internet forgets regularly. That we're just people trying to make it. We're just people um, living our lives, but we, our job happens to be in front of a camera that we share with people. That's why the highs are so high, and they're magic, and the lows are incredibly low so uh, if you find that hard to deal with imposter syndrome let me know um because yeah i uh i haven't got a clue thank you all for watching i do appreciate it i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to hit the subscribe button uh, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers the questions i didn't answer on this episode i will carry over to next episode and don't forget to leave a comment in the comments below using the hashtag ask fix and i will answer it on the next episode that we do i like to i like talking to you guys i like talking in front of the camera i like being able to get certain things off my chest and being able to just have that chat again road to 5,000 subscribers right here on youtube.com slash mc fixer i'd appreciate if you hit the sub button but until next time i will love you leave you and see you later goodbye